Yo, this is a motherfucker who needs no introduction. You are watching Breaking Records Radio. Yeah. Um, Ground Squad. So one of the things, and again, I haven't heard material from Ground Squad. I'm not even sure if material was actually recorded for the group, uh, but I have heard the name in passing. And the, the roster has always kind of been interesting to me because to the best of my knowledge, there's a few different cats in there that were originally a part of another group called Mad Craze or Mad Kraz. Um, yeah. yeah. Can yeah. you detail that, I guess, transition? It, was it like a amalgamation of people that were already in Mad Craze and then kind of... Well, yeah, like the whole group. Like it started with me and Nathan C. I was producing some stuff for him and we like started working with the, this guy named White Mike and KL. They're two guys from Sackville. And we were like, hey, you know, let's try to do this all together. Kind of like a Wu-Tang thing. Take like who we thought were the best MCs in the city. Um, and, and we were kind of outskirts too, because like at this time when you say like Buck 65, Sebitone, The Goods, those were like the hot guys in the city, which is more, I don't want to call it nerd rap, I don't know, abstract rap, whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, it's a it. weird it experimental, a, it's an anticon Exactly. Show, right? yeah. It was a different scene than what we were, so we were always on the outskirts, so we were like, you know what, let's just focus on our own shit, not worry about being in that clique and start our own thing. So me and Nathan got White Mike and, and Marvin. Then we got Mad Craze, which was Knucklehead, Short Chain, Unknown, and Big Fella. Well, Big Fella wasn't around. But like those three guys. So it was like seven or eight of us. And, you know, we just started hanging out, doing a lot of shows. And we did make an album. We put an album out and everything. And like at one point, like, you know, we felt like we took over the city. We were on the front of the newspapers. And, you know, just a lot of talk about this group, mainly probably because we were like eight guys. And, you know, in Nova Scotia, Halifax, you just don't hear that, hear about that happening very much. So, you know, we had a good run for like a year or two and then came down to like it always comes down to. I felt like I was working harder than everybody else and just became frustrating to, you know, be the producer of the group, recording the group. I think the last show I did with them, <coughs> I showed up at the show and the DJ didn't have headphones and I had to go home and get my headphones and I was, fuck, I was pissed. Yeah. I was just like, fuck this shit. I do everything in this shit. And, you know, that was it. I would, you know, I still get along with those guys. I still did some music with them, but it just became me more focused on classified. And, you know, I think my album, after, it went from the Grand Squad album, and then I did Unpredictable and kind of just went on my own from there. So. Fair enough. Over the years, you haven't really returned to, to do real group work. I think Half-Life, as a record label, is probably the most kind of collaborative space that you're, you're involved in. Um, do you ever yeah, yeah. You definitely, definitely collaborate with other people, though. Like, I... Yeah. White, White Mike, you know, for a good five, six, seven, maybe ten years after that, he would still do, like, White Mike showed up on a couple of my albums, even one of my recent ones, you know, well, not too recent, but, like, Self-Explanatory that came out in 2009. He was a big part of the Choose Your Own Adventure stuff. Um, and Grind Squad, I did put on, uh, what was the two songs we had? You, you Can't, It's Pretty Obvious, and uh, No Breaks, which were off my, like, Union dues. Around my 2001, 2002 album. So they did pop up here and there. And, and Knucklehead, who was on Super Nova Scotia on my last album. So yeah, he was really good. Cool. I seen that. So, that was amazing to see. Yeah, yeah. So we, I still got those connections. You see those guys here and there. But they just don't do music as much. So unless something makes sense, it's not like, hey, let's just hang out and make some music for fun like the old days. 